I'm Dr. Peter An. I'm a radiation oncologist at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. I'm head of the head and neck radiation oncology service at MedStar Georgetown. So I treat patients with primarily cancers of the head and neck. That can include cancers including the tonsillar base of tongue or other sites of the oral pharynx. That also includes cancers of the larynx, cancers of the paranasal sinuses. I also treat patients with skin cancers and also conditions that go to the base of the brain, including acoustic neuromas and schwannomas. My philosophy of care is that each person and situation and tumor is different. So I like to listen to people first and get a sense of what's important to them and how we can best customize our treatment for their particular situation. There have been a lot of different advances in technology in our field. They include not only proton therapy or cyberknife stereotactic radiosurgery, but also advancements in conventional radiation. So what I like about being here is that our philosophy is that it's not the technology that we use, but what that gains a particular patient. So we're really um, quite agnostic as to the type of technology. It's really what we think is going to lead to the best result. At Medstar Georgetown University Hospital, we work together collaboratively with a team of uh, head and neck surgeons and medical oncologists, as well as speech language pathologists and nutritionists. We all work together for the common goals for our patients, and we try not to do things based on our own biases, but truly try to do things that we think will be beneficial with the lowest side effects with our patients. People should choose Medstar Georgetown University Hospital for their care because we're a comprehensive cancer center, so we have all the different resources that that entails. It allows us to provide them with the latest care, but still recognize them as people. What makes me the happiest in terms of work is that I get to build relationships with my patients. So over the years, we get to know each other's families, our own personal situations. I've seen people at their best, and I've seen them when they're suffering at their worst. So um, trying to get them from that point so that we can enhance their quality of life is what I find to be rewarding. And that opportunity to do that at Metsar Georgetown University Hospital is what makes me happy. I treat primarily cancers of the head and neck and skull base. That includes cancers of the oral pharynx, that includes tonsil, base of tongue, and soft palate. The oral cavity, that includes tongue cancers or gum cancers, uh, nasopharyngeal cancers, paranasal sinus cancers, which include cancers of the nose or the areas behind the cheeks. Um, I also treat cancers of the larynx and hypopharynx. Uh, as well as benign conditions, including acoustic neuromas, uh, schwannomas, and um, other tumors of the skull base, as well as chordomas, which are in the skull base. Protons have mass and charge, and so it allows us to treat areas of the body with less collateral radiation dose including medium and low dose radiation dose to areas of the body that we're trying to avoid. In the case of head and neck cancers, we are trying to avoid radiation dose to parts of the mouth as well as the jawbone and teeth where radiation has been shown to lead to factors that affect quality of life. That includes dry mouth, taste changes, as well as dental complications. Proton therapy, in many cases, is less invasive than conventional radiation. Conventional x-rays uh, use uh, units of energy. Uh, so one example would be when you get a chest x-ray, you know that it travels to your body because you have a detector in the front and film in the back. And so um, proton therapy, on, as opposed to x-rays, have actual weight and we are able to use that so that beyond the area where we're targeting, we do not get any radiation dose. In patients who are receiving proton therapy, they would first be seen by an expert radiation oncologist. 
uh, they would have a discussion about whether or not proton therapy would be best for them in our opinion. And then if they are felt to be a good candidate for proton therapy, they would come back for what is called a simulation session. A simulation session is when we create a representation of the patient's body and so we can create the radiation plan in conjunction with our physical exam findings and any other imaging that they have had previously. Proton therapy can be used to treat many different types of tumors. In my case, where I treat primarily head and neck cancers, it can be used to treat paranasal sinus cancers, where it has been associated with better outcomes in terms of decreasing the chance of the cancer coming back. It also has been associated with better quality of life outcomes, in some cases in patients being treated for oral pharyngeal cancers, including tonsil, um, as well as base of tongue and soft palate. Uh, proton therapy can also be used to treat cancers such as cancers of the parotid gland, where we only have to treat one side of the neck. So when we have a treatment where you get no collateral radiation dose beyond where we're trying to treat, uh, we really can completely avoid the opposite neck. Protons would be minimally invasive compared to other forms of radiation, but other forms of radiation have other advantages compared to protons. So we tend to take a more holistic approach and not be concentrated on the technology itself, but really what is the best technology for a particular patient situation. The difference between proton therapy and conventional radiation is that in many cases, it has been associated with less fatigue. Uh, when patients uh, receive proton therapy, they often want to go ahead with a lot of aspects of their daily living, whether or not they're deciding to continue to work or whether they want to continue to enjoy the activities that they engage in. While each case is different, um, proton therapy in some cases may allow them to have the energy to do the activities that they enjoy doing during treatment. So our motivating factor in treating patients at MedStar Georgetown is patient outcomes. Protons is a single tool that we have, and with the experience that we have here, we are most interested in having the best outcome for our patients and not in any particular type of treatment. While proton therapy may be the choice and the best treatment for certain patients, for other patients, either cyber knife or conventional radiation can be the best for them. And uh, we don't have any problems telling that to our patients. For complicated head and neck cancers, proton therapy has not been shown to have any worse outcomes than conventional radiation. Um, we are primarily trying to use proton therapy to reduce quality of life issues such as dry mouth or dental issues or jawbone issues. Where it has been shown to be more effective is in cancers of the paranasal sinuses, where it has been shown to decrease the chances of the tumor coming back. Uh, proton therapy has also been shown to decrease the chances of the tumor coming back in complicated skull-based tumors, including chordomas and chondrosarcomas. The benefits of proton therapy include um, decreased quality of life issues, such as dry mouth, taste changes, jawbone issues, or dental issues. Um, other benefits for select cases can be decreased chances of the tumor coming back. I've had a lot of patients who come in for consultation, and uh, often with cases where they're told that they're incurable. While we cannot definitely guarantee an outcome, we've had a lot of successful cases where people have um, had uh, what I think are wonderful results. Proton therapy is a type of radiation, so we often treat using the same number of radiation treatments that you use with conventional radiation. Um, we do have some trials where we may offer lower doses of radiation with or without proton therapy. I would consider the success rate of proton therapy to be high. Um, success is defined as two things. One is 
getting rid of the tumor, as well as leading to lower side effects. In terms of the effectiveness of proton therapy, there are no studies in the head and neck that show that proton therapy is worse than conventional radiation. There are some studies in the head and neck that show that proton therapy may lead to lo some lower side effects than conventional radiation. Different signs and symptoms of carcinoma of the head and neck include pain, bleeding, a neck mass, um, problems swallowing, or bleeding from your nose. If you see any of these symptoms, then you should consult a physician. The pituitary gland controls your hormones. It is also in a very important place because it is right below the nerves that go to your eye. So tumors of the pituitary gland are difficult to treat, and uh, cancers of the pituitary gland, usually called macroadenomas, can cause visual problems. Uh, and since the pituitary gland controls the hormones or produces most of the hormones in your body, it is very important to try to preserve that as much as possible. What makes a good candidate for proton therapy for head and neck include patients with paranasal sinus tumors, uh, nasal cavity, maxillary sinus, uh, sphenoid sinus, eth ethmoid sinus. Um, other good candidates for proton therapy include patients with oropharyngeal cancers, uh, so cancers of the tonsil, base of tongue, um, soft palate. Uh, patients with tumors of the skull base are often good candidates for proton therapy as well. People should choose MedStar Georgetown University Hospital for proton therapy and radiation therapy because we are the most uh, experienced and first center in the Washington DC region uh, that treated with proton therapy. I've personally treated with proton therapy since 2009. Um, and we also have a lot of experts who specialize in different disease sites, such as in my case, head and neck and skull-based tumors. Uh, we also have access to clinical trials uh, we train residents in conventional radiation and proton therapy, and so we have a lot of expertise that we help to pass on to the next generation of doctors. At MedStar Georgetown, we have all the major forms of radiation at our disposal under one roof. So we work together with all our different specialists, in my case, usually head and neck and skull based surgeons, uh, to work together to fashion a plan uh, in our multidisciplinary group. Um, so proton therapy can be um, a, an important tool. However, when we do not think that proton therapy is a good option for patients, we have conventional radiation and stereotactic radiosurgery, including with the CyberKnife platform, as well as with the ZAPX platform. So we can offer most if not all of the major types of radiation for our patients. I've been treating with proton therapy since 2008. Um, and I was one of the first people in the United States to treat uh, head and neck cancers with proton therapy, especially uh, cancers of the oral pharynx. Um, and our first patient with that was in 2013. Um, some of the research I've done have, has involved quality of life. So we looked at a comparison of patients who were treated with proton therapy versus conventional radiation. And we showed that proton therapy does have an advantage in certain side effects, including uh, less dry mouth and dental issues. The question I wish that most patients would ask me is, what would I do if I were in their situation or if one of my family members or friends were in that situation? I think it's good to um, make a decision based on your own values and priorities, but also to get the perspective of someone who sees this day in and day out. 